Good afternoon, everyone. Please remain seated for the student procession. These staff and alumni welcome students, families, and honored guests to the white coat ceremony for the Medical University of South Carolina College of Pharmacy class of 2026. We are also pleased to welcome those international transfer students joining the class of 2025. I'm Philip Hall, Dean of the MUSC College of Pharmacy. Students today, white coat ceremony recognizes your transition from undergraduate education to graduate pharmacy education and ultimately the honorable profession of pharmacy. The past few years have been a dramatic testament to the importance of optimal health care and the need for excellent skilled pharmacists. Dedicated hardworking pharmacists have played a vital role and continue to play such in the ongoing battle against COVID. Specifically during this protracted crisis and in general circumstances, pharmacists remain an essential and invaluable source for access to medications, both prescription and over-the-counter, providing medical information, giving education and counseling, administering vaccinations, performing medical tests, coordinating with healthcare teams and participating in collaborative research. Research and drug discovery, an important mission at MUSC, opens the door to finding and developing innovative therapies for the prevention and treatment of disease, including infectious disease such as COVID. Our MUSC research faculty and research centers stand as integral parts of the multidisciplinary research network that continues to expand the boundaries of current knowledge. You are embarking on a dynamic, high impact, challenging, but most important rewarding career. Since 1882, 140 years now, the MUSC College of Pharmacy has heralded the cutting edge of pharmacy healthcare education and practice. 
anticipating, guiding, and defining the future of the profession of pharmacy. As an MUSC student and 2026 graduate, you joined the family becoming part of our important story and longstanding history. Your journey for the next four years may seem, may seem dauntingly long as you sit here today, but if you were to ask any of our fourth year students, they will tell you how fast these exciting years will pass. And when you receive that hard-earned, well-deserved diploma, you will have the proud and honorable distinction saying, I am an MUSC pharmacist. I look forward to accompanying you on this incredible journey. Wish you great success and much fulfillment as you enter this noble profession. At this time, I would like to introduce Dr. Kathy Chessman, Chair of the Department of Clinical Pharmacy and Outcome Sciences to introduce her faculty. While my faculty are making an appearance, um, I would like to welcome you guys. Uh, we're so happy to have you um, and I wish you the best uh, in your next four years. I think you'll blink and we'll be doing your hooding ceremony. So you might not feel like that over the next four years, but um, you will. It will go by pretty quickly. Um, I am, uh, as Dr. Hall said, Kathy Chessman. I um, am a graduate of this program, proud alumni of MUSC College of Pharmacy from both the BS and the PharmD programs. <clears throat> I graduated <clears throat> a few years ago. Um, some people think it was 1882 class, but no, that wasn't me. Um, I am a practicing pharmacist in the Sean Jenkins Children's Hospital and pediatrics, particularly with the pediatric surgery service and the pediatric intestinal rehab program. And you guys will see me in the second year in DPT-1, right off the bat when you start your second year uh, with fluids, electrolytes, nutrition. Um, I also help um, organize the Student Society of Health System Pharmacists, which I met a lot of you guys the other day with that. And um, we focus a lot on helping you be more prepared for your postgraduate residency programs and things like that. So a lot of you I know have that in, in, your, in your heads uh, and in terms of your career choices. So let me see if I can see the back of my people. Um, so uh, starting at the end, Dr. Chris Wisniewski is a professor in my department. His specialty is in drug information. He serves um, in the Drug Information Center for the Medical University. Um, and you will see him in the first year in Intro to DI, and then again in the third year in Advanced DI. And then uh, Mrs. Dr. Wisniewski, uh, Jennifer Wisniewski, um, is a um, our hospital lab instructor. Um, and you will see her in your um, P2 year um, in the hospital labs. Um, she's also practices at the VA um, and works at the VA. She was previous to coming to work with us, a critical care pharmacist at the VA. And then we have Dr. Anthony DeClue. Uh, Dr. DeClue's specialty is community pharmacy, uh, ambulatory care pharmacy. He practices at our family medicine pharmacy over on Ellis Oak in James Island. And you will see him in the community labs in the first year, so right off the bat. Then Dr. Taylor Morissette, <laughs> it's hard to tell who it is from the back. Uh, Dr. Taylor Morissette's one of our newer faculty members, although he just celebrated his one year anniversary with us, right? Yeah. Um, Dr. Morissette is in um, infectious diseases. Um, he provides services um, in infectious disease and antibiotic stewardship at the Sean Jenkins Children's Hospital as well. And you will see him um, in the second year in clinical microbiology and then also in uh, second year in some of the pharmacotherapy uh, courses, uh, le lectures as well. Dr. Dave Shirley, you probably already met. I'm sure you're all looking forward to Dr. Shirley's multiple courses that he teaches. Um, Dr. Shirley uh, is our jack of all trades. Um, he will be teaching you guys calculations. Um, also, uh, what's the name of that? I also have COVID brain, by the way. So excuse me, because I just had COVID last month. Um, 
oh, compounding lab. How could I forget compounding lab? And you guys will have him this year and, and definitely enjoy that. Um, and then later on in the third year, uh, he'll be teaching you law as well. And then Jolie. <laughs> uh, Dr. Jolie Fermo uh, is a prof uh, associate professor in the department and she practices in the area of ambulatory care, providing um, services in our pharmacotherapy clinic uh, to patients who she sees as an outpatient for things like diabetes management, hypertension management, anticoagulation, those types of things. And you will see her primarily also in the second year. Um, and um, all of the faculty also who have a clinical practice, you will have the opportunity to shadow uh, as you go through your first couple of years and then uh, do rotations with them in your fourth year. Um, that Emmeline? <laughs> Dr. Emmeline Tran is an associate professor in the department and she um, provides services at the Ralph H. Johnson VA Medical Center on the Adult Internal Medicine Service. Um, and you will see her also in starting in the second year primarily, but also scattered through the third year as well. Dr. Erin um, Wida is um, an associate professor in the department. Um, you know, I'd just like to say Dr. Tran and Dr. Wida just recently got promoted to associate professors, so congratulations to them. Um, Dr. Wida uh, is a outcomes researcher. So she does outcomes research and will be teaching you guys how to do outcomes research in the second year. Um, Dr. Andy Maldonado is our newest faculty member. She just joined us a month or so ago. Uh, Dr. Maldonado has spent um, 10 years working in uh, hematology and oncology um, at the Medical University of uh, hospital and she just recently joined us um, as a full-time faculty member and she will be teaching uh, the oncology subjects which you won't typically see until your third year. Um, Dr. Mark Lapointe who did graduate in 1882. No, just kidding. <laughs> Sorry, couldn't resist. <laughs> Actually, I shouldn't, since Dr. LaPointe was one of my students, that was a bad joke. Okay. Uh, Dr. LaPointe is uh, our resident Canadian on the faculty, um, and um, he is um, primarily a teacher now. He spent a lot of years doing neurosurgery and neurology, and now um, he is a full time teacher in the college. He will be teaching you things like neurology neurology topics as well as our uh, coordinating a couple of our clinical applications courses where you take all the stuff we're trying to teach you uh, in terms of content and then you apply it on clinical cases. He also uh, is the coordinator for the clinical assessment course. I don't know, some you may have already heard about this one. Uh, it's the last semester of your third year and you spend a lot of time taking care of patients, doing cases, learning how to present your information and um, he tries to get you all uh, ready to go into your fourth year rotations. Um, and then um, the last person on the uh, panel right here is um, Dr. Scott Bragg. Dr. Scott, uh, Dr. Scott, Dr. Scott is an associate professor uh, in the department. Uh, he specializes in family medicine. Um, he has a dual appointment with um, the Department of Family Medicine and with us. Um, he does a lot of resident education for the Department of Family Medicine residency program. He provides inpatient clinical services to the inpatient family medicine uh, service here at MUSC. And Dr. Bragg teaches a lot of different topics, including renal disease and um, a couple of other things. And you primarily will see him also in the second and third years of the program. So we have um, several other faculty up on the stage that are part of my department. So Dr. Shannon Drayton is um, an associate professor in the department. She um, has a long, long term practice in psychiatry and psychiatric pharmacy, um, and she will um, coordinate uh, the sections that deal with those types of patients and the conditions that they have. Um, and you, you probably know her also as the Assistant Dean for Curriculum and Assessment. And Dr. Kathy Worrell, who you all know really well by now, <laughs> 
if you don't, there, there might be a little bit of a problem. Uh, Dr. Worrell uh, started off as a critical care nurse and then she became a critical care pharmacist. And now she's the associate dean for student affairs and a couple of other things. I can't remember the whole exact title. Um, and so um, she does uh, some things like uh, coordinate our help coordinate our leader academy and some of the co-curricular activities we have besides being the dean of students. Um, and Dr. Hall, last but not least, stand up. This is the Dean of the college and also a faculty member of my department. So Dr. Hall is a professor in the department. Um, he spent a lot of years being an oncology clinical pharmacist, um, and then he moved into college administration. He still um, is active in teaching and teaches um, in an immunology course uh, that is an required, right? Yep, yep required course. Um, and so you, uh, you will see him in the spring of this year. <laughs> um, we have uh, just a couple of other faculty. Let me see who's not here. Dr. Christy Britton, um, who I think teaches in every year of the curriculum. So she's not here today. She's an associate professor in the college. Her specialty is um, in community pharmacy. She's also the residency program director for our community pharmacy residency, where we have three residents who are specializing in community pharmacy, and she works closely with the MU, uh, MUSC Ambulatory Care Services. Um, and she, you will, you will have her this year, and uh, you, you may have met her. I'm not sure, but you may have met her at the at the course coordinator meetings. Um, Dr. Sandra Garner is climbing a mountain somewhere in Montana right now. Um, she's a professor in the College of Pharmacy. Um, she is also a pediatric clinical pharmacy specialist and works with in the Sean Jenkins Children's Hospital with me. Um, she is um, her specialty is neonatal ICU um, and also general pediatrics. Dr. Jason Haney is also not here. He is an associate professor in the college. Um, he is, his specialty is cardiology. And he, teach, um, he provides clinical pharmacy services in our cardiology heart failure outpatient clinics. And you will see him primarily in the second year in the cardiology section of the curriculum. Uh, Dr. Shelby Colo is an assistant professor in the college. She uh, works in our quality department in the, in the hospital. Um, so she uh, works to ensure that uh, protocols and guidelines and things like that are followed. And um, she does that on the quality side for surgery, trauma, and some of the other services. And then she coordinates a research elective for you guys, for those of you who may be interested in learning more about how to how to conduct a research project. Um, Dr. James Sterrett um, is um, one of our faculty members who specializes in community pharmacy and ambulatory care services. He has a special relationship with the Fetter Clinic, which is a clinic that uh, helps to provide services to some of our underserved uh, population in Charleston. She, he does a lot of telehealth services for the various clinics that Fetter has. Um, he also coordinates um, pharmacy practice lab, a community pharmacy practice lab, and you will see him in the Third year. <laughs> I need some hints here. Um, and then that is it, I think. I don't think I left anybody else. So um, I'm happy to have been able to introduce some of the people that will um, be very instrumental in your education over the next four years. And we, like I said before, we really look forward to working with you guys. We're here for you. Uh, one of the things you'll learn about MUSC and the College of Pharmacy is we like to sort of act like it's a big family. Uh, we do do want you to be successful and we want you to feel like you can reach out to us either by email, stopping by our offices, uh, Teams, text, any um, multitude, Instagram, uh, any multitude of different ways that you can communicate with us these days. So feel free to reach out if you have any questions for any of us. And again, we look really, really forward to looking, working with you guys this year. And the next three years to come. I'll now call Dr. Pat Wooster to the stage to introduce the faculty in the Drug Discovery and Biomedical Science 
Justice's department. Uh, thank you, Dean Hall. Uh, welcome everybody. Uh, congratulations to the new students. You all have smiles on your face. That's that's great. <laughs> Keep them there. Uh, I'm Patrick Wooster and I am the chair of the Drug Discovery and Biomedical Sciences Department. Uh, our department is responsible for the basic science portion of your pharmacy education. Uh, this forms the foundation for uh, what you'll be doing in the clinic. And you may not think about the structure of a drug, but you will understand how that structure affects its activity. And you'll use that stuff every day, even though you, you won't be thinking about it directly. So I'm the chair. I'm also head of the Drug Discovery Corps at MUSC. We have a high throughput screening facility upstairs, and we do a lot of work with other people in the university and the other colleges to uh, work on drug targets and uh, finding ligands that can affect those targets. Um, I have <laughs> I have 10 faculty in my department, including me, and uh, you can see that most of them are out of town. I'm not going to mention those people. We'll let, let you be surprised when uh, when they come in. But you can tell them I said all kinds of nasty stuff about them and that that'll make them happy. So uh, Ji Zhang is a full professor in the department. Uh, she is a toxicologist, pharmacologist. She has a, uh, a program funded by NIH uh, interested in uh, alcohol toxicity and the enzymes that are involved. Peter Berger is a research assistant professor in our department. He's a computational chemist. Uh, I can't have very many conversations with him about that because I don't understand it all, but, <laughs> but he is uh, very well versed in computational chemistry. Uh, he does a lot of uh, modeling of, of drug targets for us, and we can actually try to find uh, new drugs based on how they fit into those targets. Uh, and uh, last, <laughs> Last but not least is Mark Heyman. Uh, Mark is an endowed chair uh, in our department in the Smart State program, and he's a natural products chemist, so he's easy to find. Just look for a lab with all kinds of green stuff in it, and, and you found him. Uh, he also has a company that he oversees, uh, and he's working to uh, commercialize uh, some of the discoveries that he's made in, in his laboratory, primarily in the anti-cancer area, but he's also done some work with infectious disease and some other things. And that really <laughs> is a brief introduction to my uh, my department. Um, I hope you'll all feel free to come and, uh, and visit me. My door is always open. I'm in room 404, the drug discovery building here. So, oh, I'm sorry. I forgot the, the guy was sitting right next to me and I forgot him. Yuri Peterson is, I would say, is the spark plug of our department. Not my memory, but the department. Uh, Yuri does all kinds of different things. He's involved in research projects with people all over the campus. Uh, he knows uh, how to do bioassay. He's a pharmacologist slash medicinal chemist. He's also very uh, well versed in computational chemistry. And, uh, and a real asset to our research programs. And I think you'll find that he is also a very entertaining teacher. <laughs> I see that I didn't forget anybody else. So uh, look forward to seeing you in class starting uh, in a couple of days. Thank you, Dr. Chessman and Dr. Wooster. I would also like to introduce one of our partners, and that is MUSC Health. Matt Severance is here representing uh, MUSC Health. Our partnership with the hospital, as well as our regional hospitals, is what makes this such a great program. Thank you, Matt, for all you do. It is now my pleasure to introduce this afternoon's keynote speakers, Bill and Lou Kennedy, the founder and owners of Nephron Pharmaceuticals, a South Carolina-based world leader in pharmacy manu manufacturing and production. The Kennedys are two of the most dynamic figures in South Carolina pharmacy. Bill Kennedy founded Nephron in 1991, having already founded Rotec Medical 
a company he sold for nearly $1 billion in 1997. As the chief development officer and owner of Nephron, he helped the company open a state-of-the-art manufacturing facility in 2014 and has since opened a new division that is helping us to solve the drug shortages problems across this great country. As the president and CEO and owner, Lou Kennedy has spurred Nephron to unprecedented growth. She is widely recognized for her achievements in business and leadership, including appointment by Governor Henry McMaster to the state's COVID-19 advisory and recovery team, recognition as the 2020 Business Leader of the Year by the South Carolina Chamber of Commerce, and she has received the state's highest civilian honor, the Order of Palmetto from Governor Nikki Haley. It is impossible to adequately recap the Kennedy's contributions and leadership to both the profession of pharmacy and the state of South Carolina. A brief bio is in your program and a more complete version is available on our website. We are delighted to have such outstanding role models of entrepreneurship, innovation, and business acumen as our speakers for the class of 2026. Please join me in welcoming Bill and Lou Kennedy. Oh, you're going to stay seated. Okay. <laughs> all right. First of all, there are over 60 of you that have done something I could never do, and that's get into pharmacy school. The only way I go to pharmacy school is on a tour. Okay. So congratulations on great scores and great GPAs. And someday when I grow up, I hope I'll be as cool as you guys. I also have to say, not only are you smart, but this is like a good looking group, right? <laughs> Like everybody's dressed so nicely. And so parents, thanks for raising up a, a cool new village of pharmacists. Um, so Bill is a pharmacist and um, he was the first class to have five years in the program and it was RPH at the time. So up until my husband graduated in 66, you could do this whole thing in four years. He was the first five-year class. Of course, it takes quite a bit longer now, and I think uh, he would agree that you learn a whole lot more. I also want to thank you for introducing the faculty. It was heartening to us. We know what great um, it is, how great it is to hire a PharmD because they're so well-rounded and so many subjects that touch our um, company. I heard um, efforts around compounding, efforts around microbiology, medicinal chemistry, all of those things touch what we do, including the safety and the quality and all of the roles that these folks play outside in the community doing the, the good work of pharmacists. And so we were tickled to hear it again because we know how well-rounded the students are and it's great for us to be able to hire them. Shameless plug, we're hiring. So, and, and we'll be hiring in 2026, okay. All right, pharmaceuticals though is changing since the time my husband graduated. There's unlimited potential for those who realize their dreams. You can be in academia like you've met these folks up here. You can be in regulatory, work for a body like FDA. You can work in drug discovery and, and help us uh, find new drugs to treat new illnesses or old illnesses. In the case of cystic fibrosis, where a lot of great work is done here at MUSC, we've been able to find a way to cure a great percentage of cystic fibrosis, and that's only happened in the last decade. Before that, we knew the outcome and folks didn't live past a certain age. So this is the kind of thing that we applaud, the study of pharmacy and drug discovery and delivery, because up until 2010-ish, there was no cure for CF. Now we know we can cure at least four or 5% of this, the patients with cystic fibrosis. All right, we have been very active in the study of pharmacy, not only because we're pharmaceutical manufacturers, but because Bill grew up being, he was the first in his family to attend college and the study of pharmacy is what has been woven through his entire um, career. And he's used it in so many varied ways. And I know he'll tell you about that, but all kinds of things from 
migraine clinics all the way to infusion pharmacy. So touched a lot of different businesses um, by having that great pharmacy degree. We do love our partnerships with MUSC. We are working closely with all the campuses, whether they be in Columbia or down here in Charleston. I like to say MUSC is the hospital of the entire state of South Carolina because of all the recent acquisitions. You can get help in the upstate. You can get help in the Midlands and help in the lower part of the state. So it's our great pleasure not only to sell drugs to MUSC, but to work with them on various different programs. We hope to have a successful clinical trial well We'll pre, um, prepare and manufacture the drugs. The clinical trial should start in a couple of weeks. And with any luck, we'll have a new thing, a new molecule that will be the, the drug work is being done right here in South Carolina. OK, so what are our dreams and goals for the future of the industry? That's a good question. Pharmacy is an honorable calling and we need the brightest minds and the most talented young people to continue to pursued these career in pharmacy in order to be able to staff the future that we hope to achieve. We want to encourage each of you to consider exactly what we're doing right here in this state and see if you might find your way into some of these varied careers. So like I said, you have a lot of different choices. And when my husband finished school, everybody really chose retail or hospital, and there wasn't a whole lot of encouragement for pharmacists to do other things in business. And so we did form something called the Kennedy Pharmacy Innovation Center on the campus and the University of South Carolina in Columbia. And it's specifically to showcase what are all the things you can do with this fabulous degree. We ask that if you feel so inclined, choose us when you are choosing your rotations. Inside our company, we have an employee pharmacy, so you get experience retail, big batch formulation, lab batch um, compounding, uh, the just study of industrial pharmacy in general, and you can even spend time in any of the labs if you like the professor earlier we heard that works on around the study of microbiology. We also, because of COVID, opened up our own molecular biology lab so that we could help take some stress off of the hospitals. And in fact, the CEO of MUSC is who guided me, uh, Dr. Pat Cauley, on how to set the CLIA certified lab up how to get it up and, and functional, and we did so. We built it in three weeks, got our certification in two days, and started helping the, um, take some of the stress off the hospitals. That is still in operation. Two months ago, we set up our own wellness program so that we can counsel, whether it be PharmDs or medical doctors or nurse practitioners, our own family, to make sure we have good health outcomes. They fill their prescriptions at our own employee pharmacy, and it's all at no cost to the employee. We think this is a good way to help keep our little area of the state healthy. The intersection of pharmacy, innovation, and business is as fascinating as it is rewarding. And the work you're going to do to equip yourselves to explore this intersection, and we, you're going to be doing that work, and we hope that you will explore it. When you do it in a collaborative environment with people you work well with, you're going to make a difference and make South Carolina proud. I just want to say congratulations to you and your families on achieving this. Good luck in your studies. Just think right now, everybody's got a great GPA, right? <laughs> so enjoy the weekend and then have fun on Monday when class starts. Now I'll turn it over to Bill. Well, after that, it's like usual. I always go second, so I don't know too much what to say. But I, I just want to share a few things with you related to sort of life, life as a pharmacist and what you might do, you know, in the future and uh, a little word of advice, maybe how to prepare for some of this. But first of all, as I look at uh, all the students out here, I have to tell you, I would like to go back to pharmacy school and I'm going to talk to the dean and see if I can, you know, maybe take a few classes or whatever, because when I graduated from pharmacy school in 1966, which was 56 years ago here in May or June, whatever, you know how many young ladies were in my class? Two. Two, exactly. It was two. So, you know, there weren't a lot of extra, you know, there were not a lot of dates that you could get out of your pharmacy school. And that, that would help our grades, I'm sure. 
But I, I mean, when I look at you and I see that and I just think of God, what all has happened over 56 years, uh, you know, and I'll have something in common with you. you're going to graduate in uh, 2000, 2026. That will be my 60th year reunion of graduation from pharmacy school. So got a little something in common there. But in, anyway, pharmacy has changed a lot. And Lou touched on the fact that when I graduated, uh, you basically could become, you know, go into the hospital pharmacy world or you would go into retail pharmacy. And about that time, the chain drug stores were just, you know, sort of getting stronger. And so they were paying great money and it really helped raise the salaries of, of pharmacists at that time. But as we know, there's a lot of chain drug stores are closing down now. They're changing the way they operate. So the pharmacy salaries, as we know it, when you've checked into it, it's not what it necessarily used to be, you know, when you first graduated. But to make up for that, you have so much opportunity today. Like I said, when I graduated, you looked at one or two fields and the third field was that you would, you know, try to become an independent pharmacy, which I did. Um, but now, because of the education you're getting here at a school like MUSC and all the connections that you can make, all the classes that you can attend, all the professors you can meet, all the research and development you can meet, these different people you meet, that's going to qualify you that when you graduate and you decide to go on for school a couple more years and do a residency program somewhere, it's going to help you tremendously through the connections and what you, what you will see and learn over the next four years. Because you're going to have to, uh, you're going to, even though you're taking you know, great classes, you're going to learn, learn a lot. You're going to be smart, of course, when you graduate, but you've got to learn how to sort of survive within the industry. And pharmacy, to me, is one of the industries that is going through so much change, you know, right now. As you're beginning to see, pharmacists are associated with every big uh, family practice. They're associated with every specialty office, you know. And now a big deal is when you go into the hospital, they actually want you there. They're asking you about your education. They're asking you about the knowledge that you've gained from drugs. They're talking to you. Well, let me tell you what they did when I graduated, if you want to go to work in a hospital. You got to be very careful because the first thing you said that might alienate some physician, you might not have a job tomorrow because they have always been worried about the fact is the pharmacist going to take over, you know, over their over their job, a part of their job. And I have battled that or have seen that go on ever since I graduated. But we finally over the last five to 10 years that's changed. And you just think about and and the dean can tell you or your professors can tell you about how much better your clinical education is today than it was say 10 10 years ago or, or 20 or whatever but right now you you've got a a big opportunity because pharmacy pharmacists are being recognized and been and they're being used in more different professions which gives you an opportunity but at the same time you know while you're in school you got to try to take some kind of classes and i don't know if you're offering you or not regulatory in the regulatory world, okay, you you need some you need some education in the regulatory world. You need ed, ed, education and quality. How the FDA looks at quality and this type of thing, especially if you might be considering going to work for somebody like that at the FDA, or you go to work for a pharmaceutical company right now. We have a young man that graduated from Georgia two years ago, uh, and he wanted to be in the uh, help me, Liz, Tosin. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. He wanted to learn business, but he wanted to learn farm. But it, but we got him in regulatory, though. In other words, he had to file an FDA submission. He can do a submission now after two years, you know. And he's and I explained to him at that time by getting in another part of pharmacy. There's not that many people I think in regulatory that I've talked to that are pharmacists, but it's a great area for them. And like I explained to him, you know, a a regulatory professional. And a pharmaceutical company is a very high paid individual today because that's the guy that kind of buffers the company, you know, from the FDA that you have to, you know, deal with the quality and with the regulatory department. So that's that's a good part to think about going into. But if you can, while you're here in, you know, in Charleston, take some night courses or do something, try to learn something about regulatory and quality because what's happening that I see this happening we're going to have a situation over the next four or five years where the government, in my opinion, is going to end up controlling most of anything related to health care, you know, is concerned, which means you have to learn how 
to work in a government system and how you navigate that system and what you go end up. You may end up, uh, you know, from your experience here and the experience you get right after college that you operate some type of business that is actually, it's regulated by the government, but you may be running a business in which you are actually truly, truly helping the people that are in the third party insurance world or in the government world. So there's a lot of opportunity, but you're going to have to look for the opening that's going to uh, that will come available to you. And then you take a chance for that. That's what I've done all my life. And I'll say one or two more things and I'll sit down. But I have used pharmacy in every job that I've had since 1966 and still use it, as Luke can tell you, you know, every day. So pharmacy is a great education. If you want to go into other types of businesses, whatever you want to do, you need a healthcare education and then you're getting that first. And then if you decide you want to branch off into something else, you're in a great position to do that. And I'm sure you'll figure that out over the next four years. Thank you very much. Bill, Lou, before you go, Lou, Lou, real quick, let me give you a. Gotta move fast. Let me give you a present. I'll come down here. It's Nephron Blue. Nephron Blue. I do that. Right. In case you're wondering, they have a rehearsal dinner at their house in Columbia this afternoon, and so that's why they're rushing out. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> But Bill, Lou, thank you for taking time of your busy schedule to join us today. At this time, I would like to invite Dr. Yuri Peterson to the podium to discuss the symbolism of the white coat. Thank you, Dr. Hall. Good afternoon. It's good to see everybody here again. It's the closing part of a fun week, I hope and uh, getting ready for the big send off or big startup here on Monday. Uh, so it's my privilege to participate in the white coat ceremony uh, for the Medical University of South Carolina College of Pharmacy class of 2026. Sounds good, doesn't it? Yeah. Healthcare professional schools first began celebrating white coat ceremonies in the early 1900s. The first pharmacy white coat ceremony was performed in 1995 at the University of Kentucky. Today, most pharmacy schools across the country hold similar events to recognize incoming students. The white coat holds much symbolism in the health profession. As a symbol to your patients, the white coat represents several important concepts. First, it indicates your membership in the practice of pharmacy. You will now be recognized as a member of one of the most trusted professions. Your colleagues and patients will trust you greatly because of the diligence and commitment of those pharmacists who have blazed the trail before you. It's your duty to maintain this trust. Second, it signifies your pledge to maintain the highest academic and scientific standards. The continuous advances in medicine and drug discovery compels pharmacists to commit an endeavor of lifetime learning. You're gonna hear lifetime learning a lot from us. Third, it symbolizes an immense responsibility to maintain a high ethical standard as a servant leader. You should always prioritize your patient needs above your own. Our job is to serve the public, our patients, and our healthcare colleagues with respect, compassion, and humility. Being a pharmacist starts today. While you may not yet shoulder all the responsibilities of a pharmacist, your lifelong journey starts now as you learn, make mistakes, and grow. I will be there with you. Uh, be thankful and humbled to be part of the highest, highly respected profession. Each time you put on this white coat, remember what an honor and responsibility it is to be entrusted with the health care of others. Welcome to the profession. We wish you much success. I would like to I would now like to invite uh, Dr. Kristen Bordner, president of the Honor, University Honor Council, to the podium for her remarks. Good afternoon, students. As you receive your white coat this afternoon, you will also be signing the Pharmacist Code of Ethics. This is an important tradition at MUSC and at pharmacy schools across the United States. The Pharmacist Code of Ethics dates back to 1848 when the Philadelphia College of Pharmacy wrote the first code. As the practice of pharmacy has evolved over the years, the American Pharmacists Association has published several renditions of the code. The current Pharmacist Code of Ethics was established in 1994 and it's printed in your program. It reads, pharmacists are health professionals who assist in 
who assist individuals in making the best use of medications. This code, prepared and supported by pharmacists, is intended to state publicly the principles that form the fundamental basis of roles and responsibilities of pharmacists. These principles, based on moral obligations and virtues, are established to guide pharmacists in relationships with patients, health professionals, and society. A pharmacist respects the covenantal relationship between a patient and a pharmacist. A pharmacist promotes the good of every patient in a caring, compassionate, compassionate and confidential manner. A pharmacist respects the autonomy and dignity of each patient. A pharmacist acts with honesty and integrity in professional relationships. A pharmacist maintains professional competence. A pharmacist respects the values and abilities of colleagues of other health professionals. A pharmacist serves individual, community, and societal needs. A pharmacist seeks justice in the distribution of health resources. In a few moments, you'll sign the pharmacist code of ethics before receiving your white coat. As you do this, reflect on all of the hard work and dedication that brought you to this point. You'll, it'll carry you with you through your next four years of pharmacy school. Reflect on those who came before you and the responsibilities that comes with the Doctor of Pharmacy degree. Remember that both the MUSC Honor Code that you've already signed and the Pharmacist Code of Ethics that you're about to sign are not merely words. They are codes of integrity, principles, and professionalism. Allow these two important codes to define your behavior as students and pharmacists. I look forward to meeting each of you as you join the College of Pharmacy this week. Um, now I'll invite Dr. Hall, Dr. Worrell, and Dr. Drayton forward to for the presentation of the white coats. Good afternoon, everyone. I just wanted to let the students know how much I've enjoyed getting to know you this summer and over this past week, and hopefully we had some fun and we'll have some more fun here as we go. And um, I just really look forward to working with you over these next four years. So students, please rise to prepare for the coding ceremony. Cooper Abbott. Fatima Al Dohan. Lemma Abdullah Al Matari. Imani Tierra Belton. Lauren Diane Brady. Noah Burkett. Vanessa Campbell.
Maria Cummins. Marley Cunningham. Daphne Ka Deng. South Carolina and attended the College of Charleston. Melissa Danielle Davis. Angelina D. John. Alyssa Elliott. Tynasia Savannah Foster. Emma Jean Feidenkevin. Bailey, go for it. Anna Maria Rossia. Ashlyn Mackenzie Gregory. Madison Brooke Grizzle. Colton Hale. Yara Ann Hallows. Mary Catherine Hightower. Anthony James Hisnanik. Anthony is from Goose Creek, South Carolina, and attended Trident. Rosemary Tara Kerouac Hoover. Julia Elise Foreman. Julian Hamilton Killy. Jonathan Logan. Canute. 
Bailey Faith Kolb. Bryson Keith Lamb. Brianna Lash. Jason Lee. Morgan Lester. Jomar Anthony Lewis. Carl Alexander Luth. Daniel Magno. Brianna Joy McElroy. Tara Mohi. Percy Wynn. Jamaica Dolores Nick. Joseph Olazabal. Victoria O'Neill. Brad Peterson. Amelia Pettigrew. Jackson Reddick. Jackson is from South Carolina and attended the University of South Carolina. Angelica Rivera Augusto. Navani Kane Robinson.
Christopher Rodriguez. Melissa Rossi. Melissa is from Marietta, Georgia, and attended Arkansas State. Isabella Alexis Rupert. Ronnie Krishna Shaw. Aisha Sadiq. Elizabeth Clark Singleton. Trenton Nathaniel Sallard. Mount St. Joseph. Tanya Patricia Thomas. Jason Tutin. Tyshayla Wanamaker. Tyshayla is from St. Max. Megan Brittany Waters. Jackson West. Brianna Williams. Charles Gregory Worrell. Savannah Kennelly Yost. Chance Milan Yurko. <laughs> Students, please rise. Everyone, please join me in welcoming the class of 2026 to the Medical University of South Carolina. Students, please remain standing. Dr. Peterson will now lead you in the Pledge of Professionalism. Um, okay, I would like to invite all the pharmacists here and those watching the ceremony uh, on the live stream to stand and we'll recite the Pledge of Professionalism. 
Students, uh, please turn to face your family and friends. Raise your right hand and uh, recite uh, the pledge together with me. As a student of pharmacy, I believe there's a need to <laughs> professional identity founded on integrity, ethical behavior, and honor. This development, a vital process in my education, will help ensure that I'm a true to the pharmacy relationship I establish between myself and society as I become a member of the pharmacy community. Integrity must be an essential part of my everyday life and I must practice pharmacy with honesty, commitment, and service. To accomplish this goal of professional development, I, as a student of pharmacy, should develop a sense of loyalty and duty to the profession of pharmacy by being a builder of community, one able and willing to contribute to the well being of others, and one who will enthusiastically accept the responsibility and accountability for membership in the profession foster professional competency through lifelong learning. I must strive for high ideals, teamwork and unity within the profession in order to provide optimal patient care. Support my colleagues by actively encouraging ethics. The oath of commodities and the code of ethics as set forth by the profession. Incorporate into my life and practice dedication to excellence. This will require an ongoing reassessment of personal and professional values. Maintain the highest ideals and professional attributes to ensure and facilitate the convenental relationship of the pharmaceutical caregiver. The profession of pharmacy is one that demands adherence to a set of rigid ethical standards. These high ideals are necessary to ensure the quality of care I extended to the patients I serve. As a student of pharmacy, I believe this does not start with graduation. Rather, it begins with my membership in the professional college community. Therefore, I must strive to uphold these standards as I advance forward full membership in the profession of pharmacy. Students, please be seated. I would now like to call Dr. Hall back to the podium for the closing remarks. This concludes the class of 2026 White Coat Ceremony. I want to thank the families, faculty, staff, friends who participated in today's ceremony here on campus as well as via live stream. There will be a reception immediately following this this student recessional in the lobby of the bioengineering building uh, next door. Students, we look forward to seeing you in class on Monday morning. Dr. Peterson will be there. Uh, everyone else, please rise for the student recessional. <laughs>